Hello, welcome to Abiding Life Studios. I'm Noah Wells. Today I have with me Shay Wells. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I also have Rob with us. Howdy. And we have two Steves with us. We we're going to say Steve P and Steve R. How you guys doing? Great. Good. Doing well. The Steves are in Colorado. <laughs> yeah, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. It's great to be great to be with you, Noah and Shay and, and Steve and Rob. Nice yeah, to be good to be with you guys. Steve, <laughs> do you want to uh, start us off what uh, we will be talking about today? Yeah, we you know we've uh, kind of gone through uh, for me anyway, kind of an upsetting year with the COVID and then with the politics and demonstrations and, and and not just in our country, but worldwide, it's been upsetting and there's kind of political upheaval and uh, I, let's just say the political strangeness in many countries, uh, Russia now and India and China and the US and Argentina and Brazil, and we're all, we all are having kind of, maybe not similar problems, but um, oh, I would say maybe division. And I guess, mm -hmm. uh, so we, Rob's, Rob gave us a great suggestion that I thought would be fun and interesting and challenging podcast to do uh, titled uh, Healing the Nation. Um, and so we would just kind of wanted to throw that out, uh, you know, like what, maybe what does that mean? And uh, what maybe what we would like to see? And maybe we maybe answering the question of where's, where's God leading us as believers, Christians, the followers of Jesus, in the big scheme of whatever that might mean healing the nation. And so I so maybe we could just throw that out. Um, to start with, and since Rob, you kind of came up with the question, what maybe you could explain, you know, kind of what you mean by that. If the nation to work, and, and I would ask it like this: Well, if the nation were to be healed, what would that look like? Well, that's that's a great question. I don't think I have a specific answer. I can go off of scriptural references, and that's probably what one of them I've got kind of printed out that I do plan on reading. I I would like to start out with an example. So uh, I was reading on Facebook today. I'm part of a fly tying group. I love to fish and, and I'm getting into fly tying. And I would have thought, you know, would fly tying be political? You wouldn't think so. And so there's a post today and this guy posted, was enjoying this group, but I didn't like the morning's warning, be kind or you're going to be booted. Didn't seem nice to me. Plenty of places I can spend my attention without threats enjoy many of you are really ta very talented uh beyond is what we want to, beyond what i need to catch trout well again there's about 40 responses <laughs> already too. i won't go into those some not, nicer all, of, than others. not all of them kind either right <laughs> exactly <laughs> ditto so so again if we if we look scripturally uh and i've got some of the things i want to to read but uh, again, a lot of these come from Matthew's, you know, the Servant on the Mount. Uh, but again, there's, there is a quote in Chronicles, the Old Testament. And again, there, God, you know, through the prophet is speaking, I think. So if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So that's, that's kind of one of the things that I was kind of dwelling on whenever I sent you the topic, Steve and Noah, the, is that, you know, through us kind of changing our hearts and going in God's direction and uh, kind of abiding with, with Jesus and him being the focus instead of our problems being the focus, uh, I, I do think that there can be national healing. I was talking with a great friend of mine uh, this morning on the phone and he's like, it's got to start with you. You know, you can't change the other people. You've got to be the change and let other people see the change in you. And uh, again, he and I have really good conversations in the morning when he does a lot of driving and I, uh, again, we have, a, we have a lot of fun 
on our talk. So, so anyway, uh, it, it, he'll get a copy of this and know he's re I'm referring to him too. So anyway, that, that's kind of how I'd like to start, Steve. Steve R. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like if you were to be able to snap your fingers and get your wish and whatever you and your buddy were talking about, uh, it's got to start with you and to see the change in you. Uh, what would that look like? Well, again, then, then it is changing your mind to be more Christ-like because in the Sermon on the Mount, he, he's talking about, you know, blessed, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. He also says uh, in the Sermon on the Mount that you've heard it said, love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that, that you may be children of the Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will that get you? Uh, are, are not even the tax collectors doing that? And again, of course, tax collectors were, were reviled at that time. And if you do greet only people, oh, oops, I misread that. And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Don't even pagans do that? And again, he, he makes a start statement, and I've heard other commentators talk about this, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Now, again, does God expect us perfection? No, but he does want us to grow in the right direction and, and becoming more Christ-like. And again, I think we do that through abiding in, in uh, letting God, you know, opening that door of our heart, letting Jesus come in and hopefully seeing Jesus's action in us through, you know, to, to show to, through others. And again, it goes into, you know, that, that section of the Sermon on the Mount, you know, somebody strikes your right cheek, turn your, turn the other cheek and, you know, uh, somebody wants to borrow your shirt, give them your coat too. And uh, somebody says, hey, carry my pack a mile, you carry that pack two miles. So again, it's a change of heart in us internally to to be more receptive and pro again how does that look in me i guess whenever i read negative things on facebook i don't respond and say i hate your guts you know you know I, it, that's that's not how i feel anyway but but it, but anyway th it does get a stir out of me i'll be honest with you you know whenever i read something that somebody doesn't totally agree with the way i think and, and not everybody's going to but, but again, I, I, I choose not to respond because I'm probably not going to change your mind anyway. So, you know, I wouldn't respond, reply to that fly tying post <laughs> beside the guy has been removed already. So, <laughs> oh, well, that, okay. that really helps uh, clarify that. So um, you would be basically if you were na national healing, it would start with you. Correct. So that other people would see the change in you. Correct. Maybe not even see a change. You know, maybe it's not a change. Maybe they just see Christ in you and see and are loved. You know, when you love people that aren't like you uh, or, or actually people that are your enemies and, and you can love them. I'm just checking to make sure I'm reading you right here. I, I think you're on track. Yes. And again, Am I perfect? No, I, I do need to move more in Christ's direction for that level of thought anyway. That, that's, my, that's me saying, Steve R. Okay, and so, and so just to make sure everybody gets a chance to chat, so Steve sure. Pollard, Pollard, when you think of healing the nation, you know, what kind of crosses your mind and as, and as Christians, how do we fit into that? Well, I, I definitely, and just thinking about this, came to the same uh, point that uh, Rob did that, you know, it starts with me. <clears throat> and so if I say it starts with me and I do that in the context of looking at the nation, I, I got a lot of work to do because I'm pretty passionate about a lot of stuff going on and I won't, you know, we got to want to offend any, right. any, any listeners of this to, but, you know, I, I have a lot of strong feelings about what's happened uh, recently. <clears throat> and, um, and, I can, and I can get 
I, you know, I can get, uh, I don't go on Facebook to, for that reason, but I mean, I'm, you know, I'm very tempted sometimes to, to drop a zinger, but I, you know, back to that second Chronicles verse, I've always had a problem with that verse. And, and I'll tell you why this is my context. You know, when I read and I just happen to be, um, kind of spending some time on David lately. And so I was in Chronicles and I was in Kings. And if you look at the whole, the whole uh, march of history of all the Kings after David, you know, up to the, you know, Babylonian exile, when everybody, when Israel disappeared, then, then uh, you kind of see this pattern of good Kings and, you know, God says, Josiah was a good king and the people prospered. Or, you know, uh, Rehoboam was a, was a bad king and there was famine and their enemies uh, conquered him. And so then there's this cause and effect. And, and, I, and I, so when I read Second Chronicles, um, you know, that was written, if you look at the context, that was written right after Solomon completed the temple. And so Yahweh comes to him at night and says, you know, it quotes that to him. But then if you think about Solomon, you know, at this time he was still the good king, right? But then he became the bad king okay. and started worshiping idols, right? Uh, however many years later that was. And then right after he died, <clears throat> you know, the kingdom, the Israel dissolved right into two kingdoms. So bad things started to happen immediately. So, it, was that because Solomon was worshiping idols or was it and into all sorts of other weird stuff or was it, you know, you know, I guess when I read, when I read through the old Testament, I see a cause and effect there, but, but it was special to Israel because God had this covenant and he, he said, you work, you know, you, you follow me and good things will happen if you, mm. If you don't, bad things will happen. You know, he said that to Abraham and Moses and the whole bit. So does that apply to us? You know, if we were to, if every one of us and everyone we know really, you know, transformed and turned to God or whatever, whatever you, how are you want to define it? Um, would the nation prosper? Would the nation heal? I don't, I don't know that I, <clears throat> I don't know that I've ever seen the cause and effect. I, I, I hear a lot of people, uh, a lot of preachers say, well, you know, God blessed America because it was founded by, by, by believers. Um, and, and I, I kind of, I kind of have some agreement with that, but I'm not sure that, that there's a direct cause and effect there. Um, so, so I go back to C's question, what would it look like if we did this? Um, and I'll just throw one more thing in there. I'm, I'm a student of history and I've, you know, I've read biographies of about half the presidents, including the ones you never heard of. <laughs> and, and I look back and Steve, Steve R and I were talking about this. So that, you know, you look back to, I think he was just reading about John Adams. You look at John Adams and Jefferson and Hamilton, man, those guys were ugly to each other. They were, yeah, they were. And so, so I don't know that the stuff that's going on today is really any worse than it's had been in the past. And then you can, you can make all sorts of examples of history where things were worse for various countries, Nazi Germany, you know, Roman Empire. Whatever. So, um, so I'll just leave it at that. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know what that would look like. I definitely agree it starts with us. <clears throat> thanks. That, Steve. Steve. Yeah, thanks, thanks for Sharing that and, and your question about Second Chronicles and the, the king's patterns and, and so yeah uh, that's you know, really thought provoking and uh, and what change. do you guys think I mean do you do you think there's a cause and effect that applies to America for example like like Chronicles I kind of think so <laughs> I I don't know I I'm not that much, but I'm not a great scholar. So on the history, you, I mean, again, it, it seems like in today's day, there's so much amplified and, and 
polarization because of social media and other factors that again yeah it's not exactly like what it was whenever uh solomon was king i i, I don't know i i don't have a good answer i got an answer rob read the verse um, and this is just my opinion not a bible scholar opinion but rob read rob read the verse the cause figure out the cause and effect here and god causes his son to shine on the just and unjust and causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. So the cause would be God's a gracious, kind, generous, loving God and, and his mercy and grace uh, aren't determined on justice. Uh, in fact, his, he shows grace and mercy to everyone. And, and provides actually for everyone and nourishes and gives energy and life to uh, everyone. So that would be my cause and effect, Steve. I don't know if that's a good answer. And I'd love to hear from Noah and Shay. Amen. What your take on that, uh, Steve's question, and also what it would mean uh, if the nation were healed. Yeah, I don't know about too much. I, I guess I've really never thought too much about the nation being healed. I do like the, what I've been watching lately. Like, is it, I guess the question for me, for you guys would be, is Americans just finally uncomfortable? And now we think there's something bad going to happen. Like I hear from a lot of believers, they think the end of the world's coming now. Jesus is coming back. Well, okay but is that just because us americans are uncomfortable if you look mm -hmm. at around the rest of the world they're they got it pretty bad and they've had it bad for many many years way more years than we have we've had one bad year and it's just i don't know it's just interesting to me that now all of a sudden i'm hearing so much about the end of the world that jesus is coming back jesus is coming back well is that just because we're uncomfortable? I guess that's my question. If you guys want to answer that, you can. If not, I can move on to other things I have thoughts on. <laughs> what do you guys think of that? No, I, I kind of think that, you know, they've been looking for Jesus to come back since he left. You know, they, they were looking back in that time that he was going to return soon. And uh, again, I, I think lots of th times, that, you know, folks are, thinking, okay, Christ is returning. And again, you know, Jesus said in the Bible, you know, there, there were going to be certain events that, that happened. And again, I think some of those, like earthquakes and famine, blah, 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 war, you know, brother speaking against brother, et cetera, that, that's, we definitely see that increasing. So, so there's things that are going to happen before, you know, before his return. So again, they've been looking for a long time. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, it, is it because that this stuff is, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't, I can't, can't claim I'm the, the answer man. I'm not. <laughs> no, neither am I. Anybody else have anything to say or should I move on? <laughs> well, I think it's a good question because it broadens our perspective. Right. Uh, yeah. We, yeah, we, you know, for me, that's one of the advantages of traveling mm -hmm. uh, because, the, you know, it's embarrassing to admit, but I think like the whole universe revolves around Colorado Springs mm. and actually or, or a little place over on Oro Blanco Drive, you know, like that's the center of the universe and everything spins around that place. And, mm -hmm. and so it's embarrassing to admit that, but honestly, I live that way often and to be able to have my um, Perspective broadened by hanging out with the people on Thursday night in India and South mm -hmm. America and um, uh, Nepal and China and my friends in, in, in Italy that has helped me to be able to see that, you know, like what we're going through now isn't just a thing. Uh, it's just not happening in Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. The COVID thing and the lockdowns and people out of going out of business and not being able to buy stuff. I'm not like my relatives in Mexico, if you're over 65, you can't go shopping. Like mm -hmm. you're, you are really locked down. You go, they won't even let you park your car. Uh, so it's not 
uh, you know, a local thing like we would think to be. And, and, and you know, probably I would expand our title uh, to like the world, not just the nation, mm -hmm. but the world. And so I think that's a great question and perspective, Noah, that you bring to us that, you know, uh, if you were in China um, back during the revolution or if you're into Russia in the, in the 20s, 1920s, when they had a revolution, you would have been saying the same thing. I'm sure the Orthodox, Russian Orthodox were saying, oh my gosh, Jesus is coming. Yeah. Jesus is coming. They're going around killing all the Christians and imprisoning the, the ones that they don't kill. Yeah. And they're trying to get rid of God. And um, anyway, so I think you're right. I think it's a, it's a, it helps me to think, think that way that, yeah, the, you know, I, and when we were young Christians, uh, they used to have these things called chick tracks. I don't know if they remember, Steve, do you remember? Steve Pollard, do you remember chick tracks? They were like cartoons and, uh, oh my gosh, they were great, but they were really scary and about the end of the world. And then I remember like on one of the chick tracks, uh, he was kind of, uh, Jack Chick wrote him. They were, it was kind of uh, provocative and in there, he, it's, he said something like, you know, the, in the prophecies, the United States is never mentioned. Mm -hmm. One, yeah. Was, oh my gosh! Wait a minute. That can't be. You know, like we're the center. We're the most powerful. We're the wealthiest. You know, how can that be? We, we you know, we're this. We should be the center of the world. And I think each country. Uh, my Mexican relatives have the same thing. You know, like they sing. I when I when I if I die and I'm not in Mexico, God, please send my body back. I got to be buried in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Like Mexico is the best place. My daughter-in-law is from. Mexico and California, uh, but she's uh, Mexican at heart. And I think that's each nation has our own nationalism for better word, uh, tribal, maybe tribalism, but we have that thing where it's like, we want, you know, we love our countries. We love our homelands. We love our systems and our, even our governments when they're bad, we love them. Um, so Anyway, that's kind of my rambling answer to that really good challenge of my perspective. Mm -hmm. Steve Pollard, you, what about you? You have any thoughts on that? Um, well, I, th I think when you say uh, your world around uh, revolves around Oro Blanco, I think that actually goes back to what Rob was saying is that we really it, it really has to come back to what we can experience and 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 uh, uh, maybe uh, inf influence, mm -hmm. which is maybe our family, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little beyond that, maybe our workplace, you know, maybe our city. Uh, in a larger sense, we you know we have some influence on <clears throat> what happens in Washington through our le electors or. Through, through political campaigns or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, like, like I said, I, I kind of started off saying that I, I, uh, I get challenged by this a lot because but I, um, I, I do kind of keep up with the news and sometimes I just, sometimes I just have to turn it off. I said, I, I'm just burned, burned out. And, and then I, I try and stay neutral and I try and keep an open mind. And then I get a jab from a family member, mm. just out of the blue, you know, something about, you know, uh, the, the current situation or the past president or whatever. And it just, you know, lights me up. And, um, you know, and then I, of course, I want to respond or not. And, and that's where I go back to my own healing. Okay. Um, do I want to, I, I think Rob said it great when he quoted uh, Sermon on the Mount, I need to love my enemies. Mm -hmm. And our enemies are defined as anybody who really has something against us. Mm -hmm. And it may just be a political opinion, but some people are so emotional about that. Mm -hmm. that you can't even talk about them. And they, I mean, that it's their life, especially if they're not believers, that's mm -hmm. their life, it you is. know, of what's happening around them. And so if you even try and have a discussion about it, you're challenging their life moral yeah, right and so it it with a lot of people you can't even you can't even have a discussion and i've 
And I've learned that. I've learned, you know, uh, you know, it's great when you can have a great discussion, liberal versus conservative or whatever, uh, with uh, with somebody who wants to have that discussion. But it's 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 rare, because I think people own this, and this is where I got to watch myself. I do I own, do I own this? Is this my key to happiness of what's happening? Um, you know, uh, in, in politics or what's said by whom and whatever. And, and I have to really go back, you know, instead of being fired up and I'll, I'll be the first to confess, I'll, I'll, I'll hate a person because of what they said. I'm angry and I wish them harm, <laughs> you know, somehow it's like either lose your next election or gee, maybe you'll get COVID. <laughs> you know? Steve, that I'm, leads I'm, right I'm, into something I wanted to say. Again, the, the couple other things like one's a verse and one is a statement I read in a devotional. Again, in 1 John 4.20, it says, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God who they have not seen. So again, if, as Christians, we, we are commanded to love one another, not hate. So, that it's, again, I, I'm glad you mentioned the word hate because, like I said, as Christians, we need to take a different view. And again, my, I'll just say this too. My wife hates right now for me to use the word Christian. She doesn't want to be referred to as a Christian because of the negative connotation that it has in the community in the world right now because that kind of lines you up with a certain political party and certain political beliefs she doesn't like that i i've kind of been referring to myself as a jesus jesus follower because i'd rather be known as a jesus follower than a christian right now to be honest with you so again that that kind of goes along with that and another statement that i read in a devotional and it's and i'm not familiar with uh, elizabeth kenny but she's quoted in saying this he who angers you conquers you. And I thought that was profound. He who angers you conquers you. So boy, there's a lot of anger going That's around good. if you read Facebook. Mm -hmm. So a lot of yeah. people are being yeah. conquered by, by thoughts and images that are, are posted around on, on social media. That, again, just yeah. throwing that out. I'm I, not, I hope you don't think I'm picking on you. Steve. No, no, no. I, 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 I like what you're saying. And I actually, Everything I just told you about when I get fired up about something, I actually welcome it. Maybe not at the moment, but I eventually mm -hmm. I welcome it because it's Jesus saying to me, love your men and love your enemy. Love this person who hates you. Don't hate them back. Right. And then it works on me in a lot of other expanded ways of just uh, love in general. And, and so I, I actually use it as this is, this has been good to, uh, um, challenge me am, am i abiding you know am i uh am i uh walking in you know daily with him or am i thinking out to the future and and uh and and uh, getting troubled by what i can't even control right yeah we do need to keep the door in our heart open and again it, it can open and close in a with just a thought so how do how do we kind of keep abiding and keep that door open to Christ in our life. A Amen, brother. <laughs> I hear you. It's a challenge. Yeah, yeah I would definitely agree because when I finally come to the conclusion or whenever God finally gets to me to love my enemy, it actually sets me free. You know, and that's, right. I think that is the sweet part about it. And that's what he wants to, what the whole point of it is, is he's really trying to set us free because you're right. When I'm angry with someone, they own me. And any little thing they say, I explode on. But then if I can just love them, even though I don't want to, it really does set you free. Yeah, I definitely agree with what you guys are saying. Love you, Jay. We haven't heard from you. I, I have a lot of different thoughts. <laughs> um, not different from you guys, but a lot of like points. So first of all, um, because my life is so much on social media because of my not my ministry job but my other job is very social media driven right i see a lot and i hear a lot and i get told a lot and um you know with everything going on <clears throat> worldwide and within our nation i have 
chosen and I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to like toot toot, but um, I've chosen to not even talk about it because I want to be love instead of opinionated. And I have had messages of going, why aren't you talking about this? You have a social media platform and you're ignoring it. I'm not ignoring it. I'm choosing to just be light over here. And I think sometimes social media becomes opinion media. And I think social media started off as a really cool place to like share your family photos and share what you're doing in your life. And it became a way to attack other people. And even within Christians of then posting really condemning things of if you believe in this, like Mm -hmm. I see their heart behind it. And that's where I really think it comes down to the Jesus in me sees the Jesus in you. And I know we're talking about that last night on our Thursday night meeting where people can be jerks. They can say some really hurtful things. So you have a choice. You can either say things back or get fired up or go, okay, but Jesus is still in him in them. So I'm going to love them. And I know Noah kind of wrote this down, but recently we've had a family thing. My brother has completely, I haven't spoken to him in three years. And, um, he recently told my mom, I found out who you voted for. I don't want you in my life. I hate you. And I will never speak to you again. And you will never see your grandchildren again. Mm -hmm. And my poor Uh, mother is so upset. And it's a bummer because something, and I don't, I don't do a lot of politics. I don't do a lot of anything. And I know many people who are passionate about it. And I'm not saying I'm don't care. I just don't put everything into it but you know my brother just wrote off my mom because of the government it wasn't anything she did it wasn't her as a mother it wasn't her as a grandmother it wasn't her as a human it wasn't the jesus in her it was the world part of her and i think that there's so much going on that we choose to see the flesh and not jesus and we're choosing to see the anger and the hurt in people and not Jesus. And it's hard, right? Like I'm not perfect. I get mad at people. I get you know fired up too. And especially on social media and there's people leaving social media because they're fired up instead of going, okay, social media is getting really negative. What can I do to be positive? Right? Like things are getting kind of crazy. What can I do to be positive? And I think it's, you know, everybody has different opinions on everything, right? Mm-hmm. We all have different opinions on how to raise our kids, on what a marriage should look like, on what we, how we should budget on what kind of cars you should drive, right? How to used, walk with God. Right. How to walk with God. Do you go to church? Do you not? Do you read your Bible every day or do you pray every day? Do you pray enough every day? How do you pray? Really? Like, there's so many different opinions on everything that we're missing Jesus. And it's like, I want to be right I don't want to just see Jesus in you. I want you to know how right I am. And I think that in healing the nation, if whatever, if if that's even a possible thing, it's not up, it's not up to us, but I think that we can be vessels in that healing by being vulnerable and working on accepting ourselves and others and having that mutual respect for each other that it's like, respect has just gone out the window where it's like, you know, I remember growing up, we were a big Chevy family. And so it was like, if you drove a Ford, it was like Ford, you know, like (laughs) how dare you? And now my dad drives a Ford, which I'm always like, I'm confused about what my childhood ever said, because now you drive a Ford. Um, But you know, that was the big thing, but it was like, you know, you'd roll your eyes, but you wouldn't run a Ford off the road, right? right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't destroy that person for having a different opinion. You might roll your eyes and just keep driving. And now it's like, I need you to know, and I want to hurt you with my opinion so that maybe you'll have the same as me instead of going, cool, we have differences, but guess what? We all have Jesus, whether you're a believer or you're not, I believe that Jesus is still, that God is still in you. He still created you, whether you're a Christian or not. So why not say, cool, we have different opinions, but I love the Jesus in you. So let's just keep going. 
So that's where those were my opinions. <laughs> that's where I was at. Oh, yeah, it's great. That's hey, great. I just want you to know you're wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and I'm right. Well, well, yeah. we're not going to hate you, Steve. We're just going to nuke you off this uh, Zoom call here. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oops, accidentally kicked you out. <laughs> you know, you know I, I, I was thinking of something, when you, and I think everything you said was just wonderful. And, you know, you're talking about your family issue. You know, I've seen some of that, and I've experienced that in my family, too. And, I, and I, my prayer in, in that situation is I just want to heal what I might have an influence over. Mm -hmm. And, and oh, I, I may do, right? I, I may not, I, I'm, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to convert anybody. Correct. I might, be able, I might be able to have a conversation sometime and debate, debate something, you know, and maybe come to some middle agreement or whatever. But, but I really want to reheal the relationship. And like you, I, I, I just kind of gone silent. And uh, because I, you know, there are some people I can have a really good, uh, there are some people on the other side of the political view that I can say, I'm sitting down, we can have a great conversation and it's, and it's not attacking, it's just difference of opinion and, and it's fun, but that's rare. And, Very. and so when, so when you can't do that, then you got to say, well, look, you know, for the sake of this relationship that I have, uh, I, I, I want that to be healed. And that, and that's about, you know, that I think that's about the as far as you can take this. Um, and, um, you know, the, the other thing to keep in mind when you hear things on social media and you just open up the, you know, the newspaper and read, you know, about, about stuff. One thing that's important to realize <clears throat> is the definition of politics and the definition of war are just a matter of degree. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Politics is war. In fact, you know, if you study war, the definition definition of war is politics by other means. Wow. You know, it, it's just an extension. And if you look at it, it is true. I mean, there's that you're you're trying to uh, you're trying to score uh, power over your opponent, and the way you do that is to attack them where they're weak and and mass and leadership and all those kind of things that you could define about a successful war. Wow. To play into politics. If you understand that, then you look back and you say, okay, now I understand the hate because this is, this is power versus power and, it, and, uh, and people are own this as we've talked about. And, and so if, if you look at it that way, then you kind of get a better sense of where this is all coming from. And, and then you can say, yeah, this is, this is the enemy. You know, and he loves this stuff. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah great. Great point. And and he he's the accuser of the brethren, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, takes great pleasure in us accusing each other and and him uh, accusing us. And it kind of it kind of you guys have all said some things that were really thought provoking and spirit provoking. I think to me and when uh, you read the first John verse. Uh, that anybody that claims to love God, um, you know, I, you know, I love name dropping. I was talking to Noah about this is like, Oh my gosh, you know, I, I've got this secret weapon. Now uh, I can pretty much make up anything I said and say, this is my secret. So probably nobody will believe me after now, after I, I come clean, I can make up, I can say pretty much anything and say, you know, Mike told me that. <laughs> It's, but Mike actually did say one thing uh, when talking about loving God, um, and it's kind of like the map on the back wall. And he said, uh, you know, like we, we Christians, we sing about loving God and we talk about loving God. He goes, but if you're, I don't know if anybody has a map anymore. Everybody's got a GPS on their phone. But in the good old days, we had maps. And the first thing you had to do if you were going to go somewhere was find yourself on the map. And acknowledge where you are on the map. And so I would say in the terms of uh, our healing uh, in ourselves and healing this nation and healing as a world and walking with the Lord and it is figure out where we are on the map. And sometimes uh, we have to admit, oh my gosh, I do hate my brother. Mm. And uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to quit, uh, 
kind of faking it and seeing that, oh, I, you know, I really, really struggling, hating my brother, but I love God so much. I am just like, like I'm this saint that I really love God, uh, but I sure do hate my brother, my sister, my uh, political different person. Uh, and so, so then I could come back to that and like, like Steve mentioned, I kind of welcome that. I can welcome that and go just acknowledge, oh, here I am. This is where I am on the map. And I'm not going to pretend like I love God. In fact, it's going to be an eye opener for me. And then I read the verses on the Sermon on the Mount and I'm going to go, oh my gosh, I really don't even, uh, you know, like I struggle loving people that love me. I forget about my enemies, the people that actually care about me is where I have uh, a struggle. And so Steve mentioned that we can start at home and start with the people closest. And so I would say that would, for me, it'd be my family, my kids, my grandkids, my neighbors, Jerry and Josie and Chuck and Patty and uh, Jonathan and Kate. I, I, can, I can just start with them. And, uh, and, and you know what, they love me. And it's still, we, we struggle sometimes because we're different. And then I, and so I would say um, my take out of our conversation would be like, let's acknowledge where we are on the map of um, healing and uh, wherever it might be. Maybe you guys or our listeners love each other uh, perfectly. I want to hang out with you and learn and watch, follow in your footsteps, actually, and his step where you step and learn how to do your, do it. And, th and then I really like what you said, Shay that uh, the other things that we can do to practically, for me anyway, and this is just my take on what you've said was, uh, well, I can, I can be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I can choose, I have, I've got this wonderful friend who was struggling with uh, his marriage and he was having all sorts of struggle and he finally came to this conclusion and he said, uh, I've decided I'm going to choose soft and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I choose soft and vulnerable as my response uh, to my wife having an affair or my wife not working, all sorts of stuff that uh, he was saying, I choose soft and vulnerable. And then you said also I can grow in accepting myself and other people mm -hmm. and, and, and then uh, re doing that in a way that's respectful. And it's not, I'm not saying that we got to do it perfectly. I'm saying we can just do it if we even move that direction and take one foot and, and see Christ in us, because it'll be him. That's what I love about the Sermon on the Mount is like, and I get the Sermon on the Mount is like, well, I'm convinced I can't do it. <laughs> I'm like, totally love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. And, you know, the meek shall inherit the earth. Well, you know, like pretty much I'm checking off the boxes going, uh, not my that's you know not like not my experience not my experience you know peacemakers oh my gosh i love a fight uh, <laughs> so i i uh you know so it's like wow i get to see christ as i even think about being vulnerable or accepting someone else or accepting you know me with all my flaws i recognize well that's not me that's definitely not me that's christ in me that's christ in each of you guys just hearing you talk about uh, moving and welcoming uh, that loving your enemies i think is i'm inspired and uh, thrilled to be actually here with you guys today and uh, talking about this um, anyway so that's kind of my my sum up and we are kind of running out of time uh, so i wonder if anybody else had anything they would like to um, sum up with before we call it quits. I have something, but it's not really a sum up. I think it would start a whole nother conversation. So <laughs> I will just say thank you for everybody. Is Does anyone else have anything else to say or we want to end it? We can end it. I just appreciate all your guys' hearts and um, willingness to open up. I know it's scary to share this stuff because a lot of people watch the, well, I don't know how many people watch these, but people do watch them. So I know how terrifying it is to be open and honest. And I do really appreciate that from. I'm each. just glad we fixed it. <laughs> we're fixed. Yeah, we we're did all it. fixed. Yeah, we nailed yes. it. <laughs> we did. Oh, no, all the politicians do that. Come to us. We can <laughs>
fixes for <laughs> 10 minutes or half 40 minutes. Yeah. I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Yep. And thank you to the listeners. And we'll do another one very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.